I have also watched a debate between Muhammad Hijab and an atheist, whoops, in which Muhammad Hijab could not respond to the doubts the atheist was bringing. And now I'm having intrusive thoughts about the existence of Allah. I am severely depressed and this is destroying my life and not improving any and not improving any advice. So first and foremost, <clears throat> as we've said, and we haven't, you know, went into depth, but I've mentioned this many times, Muhammad Hijab and the likes of Muhammad Hijab and anyone who is not a Sunni Salafi, you should never listen to. I didn't say don't listen to. I said never listen to. Don't run for your deen. Run for the hills and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hills. And I've said this, we've said this countless times. So this is my first piece of advice is don't listen to those people. Secondly, this also goes to the mafasid. If you go to what I just talked about a couple of days ago about debating and arguing. Exactly. We talked about it in detail. And this is the mufasid. This is why the Salaf hated that. Why all those books like Usul al-Sunnah and all those other books, they hated that. Why? Muhammad Hijab gives a platform for, for, for atheists and mushriks and shayateen and, you know, all these people. People who eat, tear pages of the Quran and eat it. Come on. He's going to be responsible before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he's a subab. He's a reason that an atheist or whoever tears up pages of the Quran and eats it. He's the one who gave that platform. He's the one who didn't deal with it with knowledge. He's the one who encouraged. He didn't want that, but this is the this is the the outcome. Because you didn't stick with things enemy if it had been knowledge based, then the atheists would not tear up the Quran, but out of so much frustration because you make personal attacks, you talk about the man's wife or whatever, you see the mufasid. Okay, that's the second point. The third point is when it comes to things like OCD, you know, very 